Hey everybody, welcome to Comics with Bueller. As always, I'm Bueller. This is episode 71 of the new Coffee and Comics show. As you can see, I'm not alone. I have my good friend Bob here with me. Bob, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm excited for today. You know, this is the second episode past our two-year anniversary, and the giveaway's still going on. That's awesome. We got a lot of people who entered last week, and you can still enter right now, mm -hmm. so please go check out last week's Coffee video if you haven't done so already. Just leave a comment. Actually, the rules are in that video. You have to subscribe to Everything Comics. That's his channel. And you are on your way to 1,000 subscribers, yes, right? Yes, very quickly. Yeah, road to 1,000. That's our goal. We're going to get them there by summertime. That's kind of what I'm thinking, right? That'd be awesome. Thank Ma you so Megacon. much. Megacon. Megacon would be awesome. That'd be very cool. <clears throat> but, of course, we always start off with the coffee that we're drinking mm -hmm. today. And today I am drinking a caramel frap. I'm almost halfway done because yeah. we've been talking before we did this video. <laughs> so, uh, but this is brought to you by Mocha Express, the official coffee shop of Comics with Bueller. Mm -hmm. If you're in town, let me know. I'll take you to Mocha Express. And you can get whatever you want. But this is a caramel frap, and this is one of my favorites. You have your drink, and it's almost halfway gone as yeah, well. That's right. I have a cold brew with some hazelnut sugar free sweetener inside of it, and it is dang tasty. You know, I didn't try any of the eggnog. They didn't, even, didn't? They didn't mention it to me. They didn't even mention it? So I'm pretty sure you're lying. I am not lying. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's lying. He just made it up. He's like, oh, it's a two-year. I'll just throw him for a loop and just make some stuff up. Okay. All right. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah whatever. Just go ahead. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, we got a lot of great things planned on this show. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave a timestamp if you want to jump right to the topic, because today's topic is what makes a good comic shop, and we'll be talking about that here in a little bit from all the comments that you guys left on last week's preview video. Uh, but besides that, like I said, the giveaway is still going on. We'll announce a winner next week. And honestly, I don't know exactly what our schedule is next week because I have that event, the Comics Pro event. Right. And we might have to reschedule the copy video for a Tuesday and kind of flip the top 10 and the copy video. We'll let you know. Uh, right now it's kind of up in the air. Um, we'll see how much time that, that Comics Pro event takes. Sure. Because that's a whole weekend thing. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone who joined our Patreon for the channel. Mm -hmm. Patreon is doing very well. If you're interested in joining the Patreon to help support the channel, uh, like I said last week, it's only $4. It's just one tier. It's the price of one comic book a month. Can't and that. if you want to help support the channel, if you think we provide content that's worth one comic book a month, then please feel free to join our Patreon and I don't have any exclusive stuff on there yet, but I'll probably jump on. I guess you can go live. Yeah. And that's kind of cool. I'd like to go on there live, just talk comics, you know? Absolutely. I do that all day long anyway. I know. <laughs> so what's the difference between going there and just turning the camera on and start talking? It's still something new. Very much so. Um, also, I want you know, there are some Bueller boxes available. If you're not familiar with the Bueller box, it's a comic book mystery box. Uh, they're very inexpensive. They're like $14. I'm just doing media shipping right now because I'm out of Gemini mailers. So you save some money. It's only like 4 bucks. So it's less than $20. You get like 11 or 12 books. And it's a mixture of new books and old books. Just a bunch of good stuff. But it's all main stuff. It's no, none of the stuff you've never heard of before. Sure. It's, it's Spider-Man, Batman, all sorts of goodies. Um, let's see. Also, Thursday. This coming Thursday. We weren't able to do it last week. Something came up. But this coming Thursday will be on your channel. You want yes. to talk about that a little bit? Sure. On Everything Comics, uh, we have the uh, weekly rundown. And uh, Bueller and I are going to uh, be talking about the latest uh, pop culture news. Everything that has to do with comic book movies and TV shows. Maybe some stuff about the comics itself. And we'll be discussing about three or four of the top news topics of the week. Uh, about a half an hour show. And we're really looking forward to it. It'll probably go more like an hour. Maybe. Probably. probably <laughs> an hour and a half probably. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but we always start with our first five. Yeah. And let's go ahead and jump in there right now. Mm -hmm. And I'll go ahead and start first because I already have one of my books up there. Sure. And this is Alienated Number 1. Mm -hmm. This is a brand new book from Boom Studios. Mm -hmm. I've really enjoyed their content that they've been putting out, yes. their books. This one is no exception. It's probably on my top five list as far as their books that they do. Wow. And I have an extra copy for you, buddy. Thank you. And this is, I think it's the FOC variant. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Appreciate you can it have very that much. one. So that's my first one. Yes. My second one, and look at these. I found this because I you knew I wanted this book. I did. This is Red Mother number one, the variant cover. Just kind of a neat cover, and I wanted it, and I got it at TFA for two bucks. Nice. So I can't complain. And then, speaking, staying with Boom, mm -hmm. this was a good week for Boom for me. Yeah. Folklords number one, the variant. How much do you think that was? 
I don't have maybe two bucks. Fifty cents. Fifty cents. Fifty cents. 50 cents, 50 man. cents. Love it. Love it. <laughs> a couple of other books I got this week. Uh, the Venom number twenty three. This is the Donny Cates. Yeah. Who's on the cover? The Scotty Young one. I that was that actually up. on the top ten this week. I know. I got it for three dollars less nice. than cover price. They had them sitting on the shelf because they don't sell. They don't upcharge for books like that. I love it. That's why I like T Pop so much. Yeah. Not to mention this last book. Yes. Uh, we didn't get a chance to show it last week because it didn't show up. It was a couple days late. But this is one of the prizes that we are giving away. So it's very important that you enter the two-year giveaway from last week's copy video. This is it right here. This is the Shannon Mir. This is the very first cover he ever did. It's autographed by Shannon Mir. This is, it's the Wizard of Oz. It's an Oz book. Right. And it's number seven. I, I'm forgetting the title. I'll probably put a little caption down there so you guys will know. But this is the very first Shannon Mir cover he ever did. That's amazing. This is a very spendy book. 9.8 of this book sell for $700. Yes. He sent this to us to give away for our two-year giveaway. Thank you, Shannon. Yeah, thank you, Shannon. And we can actually show it. So that's uh, pretty cool. And it's autographed by Shannon. So there you go. Yeah. So make sure you go check out last week's video. We'll put a link to it right here. It'll pop up. You can click on that. You can go enter if you haven't already, and you'll get a chance to win. And I want to let everyone know we are shipping internationally. This is open worldwide. So if you're in Australia or England or wherever, if you win, we'll send it to you. So that's pretty good. That's awesome. Um, okay. That's my five. Mm -hmm. You got yours? I do. All right. Let me set these down. So yesterday I went and picked up some comics locally, and this is part of my, my, my latest comic call. So I got some Spawn books. I got Spawn number 71. Nice. Then I got Spawn Blood Feud number one. That's one I've never actually seen before, so I'm excited to read that one. Very cool. Got Spawn number 17. And of course, all Spawn covers are amazing. They are. I got Spawn number 80. Were they having a sale? Uh, yeah, they did. They nice. were they were having a haggling. I got these for about 30, 30% off. Nice. Uh, and then I got Medieval Spawn Witchblade number one. I love that cover. Very cool. Was that all the Spawn or did you get more? I got a ton more. I figured that. <laughs> That's my first five. That's pretty cool. Well, let me put this one back up there. Sure. I want, I want to give Shannon a little bit more screen Absolutely. time. You know, for taking the time to send that to us. Yeah, I just think it's great. He's one of my favorite uh, artists out there right now, and I just think it's great that he watches the show. So thank you very much, Shannon. And you always order a bunch of his books. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I only have one. That's because somebody sent it to me. I hear you. But you're buying them all the time. All the time. Well, very cool. Whatever. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and jump to our topic for this sure. week. And basically, we asked the question on last week's preview video. The question was, what makes a good comic shop? What do you look for? Mm -hmm. This is a great topic because I think it's very important. The reason, there's a method to my madness. Sure. And every time I do a, a question, there's a reason why I'm bringing that question up. And the main reason I brought that question up is because there's the Comics Pro event, which is this coming weekend. Right. And if you're not familiar with Comics Pro event, it's an insider comic book industry event for comic shop owners. I'm going to be at this event. Mm -hmm. I will have the opportunity to meet hundreds and hundreds of comic shop owners. So the information that you guys provided, I'm going to pass along. That's awesome. And so that's kind of the method to my madness. Nice. So anyway, the, that was the, the conversation we had. These are all comments from that video. Let's go ahead and jump in. You are up first with the first one from Steve. All right. So this, this uh, comment comes from Steve Kanj. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, he says, I think what makes a great comic book store are the people that work there. It all starts with the owner. If he or she is approachable, you know, if you could have a great conversation with him or her and that the staff is knowledgeable, that is just about, uh, that it's not just about business, that it's also personal and they know you. That's a great point. Yeah. Uh, they call you by your first name. I've been going to my LCS for close to 30 years. They treat me like family. And I mean the good family, not the drunk uncle that comes to Thanksgiving and starts drama up. <laughs> and of course, the books have to be taken care of. Uh, I've been to one LCS, which I won't name, uh, which is closed now. And everybody knows them in New York. And they had bad practices when it came to their customers. Mm. I believe that's why they fell. The customer service was terrible. The books were all damaged. And the owner was, a, let's just say, less than approachable. Uh, the environment has to feel welcoming. Um, I've gone in uh, 
I've gone to my LCS and uh, not bought anything and just stood around talking for hours. I think that's about it. Happy anniversary and keep on trucking. There we go. (laughs) So this was one that was mentioned time and time again. Yes. Which was customer service was number one. Yeah. Customer service, being approachable. Uh, Steve has been collecting for a long time. Uh, The gentleman who shared this comment. Uh, But time after time, like I said, this was the number one thing, customer service. It goes a long way. Sure. It really does, especially if you're a new customer walking in there. You have to have a few key things, friendly people and knowledgeable people. That's right. Not to mention you have to have people that are willing to share their knowledge with other people and not make someone who might not have the same knowledge you do feel like they're less. Oh, exactly. That's, I know, has been a problem. Sure. It's like you come in there, you ask a question at a comic shop, and maybe one of the employees or the owner is kind of like, Really? You know, it kind of gives you that look, the stink eye. Right. You know, maybe a be- like, well, how come you don't know that? You have to treat everyone with respect. Mm-hmm. And customer service goes a long way. Knowledge. The one thing I run into a problem, though, with customer service, a lot of these shops, there's one person working, and it's the owner. Right. And they just don't have the payroll to have more people on staff. That's right. So we do have to cut them a little bit of slack. So if they're not able to attend to you right away because they're dealing with something else, I think uh, we should recognize the fact that they these are local-owned businesses. They don't make a lot of money. They're not really even paying themselves. You know, as far as these owners, a lot of times they're not really even taking a salary right. and stuff. Um, so give them a little bit of slack and do your part to where if you see a customer in there and you know something that might help them out, jump in and say oh yeah i like that book right you know that's a good you should pick that up or something like that i've done that many times oh sure it, it goes a long way especially if you notice that someone new right absolutely no I, I i agree with everything that you're saying you know um there are a bunch of different comic shops out here in the portland area and uh, i kind of rank them inside of my mind as you know to who has the best customer service yeah. and there's there's one that i won't even walk into because it seems like the guy who owns it doesn't even like what he's doing yeah. you know and so uh, so i kind of try to try to stay away from that shop i've i've st- i still go in there every once in a while i think i know which one you're talking right, about right right but i don't go in there uh, i've been there like twice yeah exactly yeah. and 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 but it's because of the customer service yeah. right uh, i i think that that goes a long way i also think that there are some you know some comic book snobs Mm-hmm. Uh, like the type of thing that you're talking about when you ask a question and, and it's like, how can you not know that? Yeah. And they try to like lord their comic book knowledge over you. Uh, I don't think that makes for a good customer yeah. service. I don't think that makes for a good approachable uh, experience uh, you know, when you walk into a comic shop. But I do agree that customer service is probably number one on the list. Uh, I love walking into a comic shop, and just like he says, they know your name, yeah. and you can talk to them about just about any subject. You can talk about comics for hours, but you can also talk about just about any other subject with them, and uh, and you, it's it's an experience going yeah. into the store. Like you said, he just go, he's gone in there and just hung out, not oh, about yeah. anything, just talk comics. For sure. It's it's almost like a hangout. Right. A good comic shop is a hangout place Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Just like the local barbershop used to be. There you go. Uh, uh, the next comment we have up is from Comic Connor 101 good staff that is knowledgeable on what they have in stock. It's also important for comic shops to host some events throughout the year to bring together the comic community within their area. Lastly, I like comic shops where the owner employees build relationships with customers. There are a few shops in my area. They are all similar. I go to a special one because whenever I go there, I have a small conversation with the employees which brings extra value to the visit. It's all about employee knowledge, the product in stock, the customer service, the same things that make other companies successful will lead to a comic shop success. Very similar customer yes. service. Like I said, a lot of comments were focused on customer service. Right. But the one thing you brought up here that I really liked was events. Events, for sure. And I think that there are comic shops in our area mm-hmm. that take advantage of that, and there's some that don't. That's true. And the ones that don't, I never understood why. Because there's a lot of stuff available to them right. in this area. I mean, as far as creators and stuff like that, if you're not taking advantage of, hey, you know, let's get Joshua Williamson down here. Uh, he's writing Flash. He, he'd love to talk about us, but come to a, a shop and do a signing. Right. You know, why not send him an email? You know, why not reach out? I'm sure he would do it. He's local. You know, exactly. Some shops just don't even think about it. Okay. Right. Other hand, other scenario. There's an event coming up next month. Brian Michael Bendis. Yep. 
um, David Walker, a handful of other people. All the Eisner Award winners. All the Eisner Award winners mm -hmm. are showing up for a free signing at a local comic shop. Yeah. There's always, seems like, some events going on at a particular group of comic shops. And I think that helps out a lot because you get to connect with the, the creator. Not all comic shops have that available to them. Right. You know, just because of the area where they're at. We, like I said, are lucky because we do have that access. Absolutely. But if you have the opportunity to do those events, to do something special for your store, and maybe not even a creator, but just make an event, you know, you should do it. Absolutely. You know, I mean, not everybody has the money to be able to go to a Comic-Con. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, you know, there are some people out there that have uh, social anxiety. They don't like going into places with that, you know, huge crowd yeah. of people. And so having a local event at a comic store that is free yeah. uh, allows some people that normally wouldn't be able to experience those type of things at a, at a comic convention there at your local comic shop. And I think that, you know, that... It, it, it breeds well, uh, well-being towards the comic community all the way around, especially in your local area. Yeah, like you just said, I don't know why you wouldn't. Yeah, uh, I, I have talked to a local comic shop owner, and I have asked him, asked them why they don't have more of those. And that particular person has a little social anxiety when it comes to talking to some of these creators. Yeah, you know, and I've even offered. I said, you know, I'll I'll, I'll call them up for you. Uh. You know, uh, but uh, events at at a local comic shop, you know, I think it not only helps out the store, it helps out your clientele, helps out the community, and it does bring people together. It's a win-win situation all yeah. the way around. And I think more comic shops should do it. Well, I remember like New Comic Day, not the last one, but the year before that. Um, comics Adventure, they were having a thing, and I was helping them out. Mm -hmm. And I was out in front of the store, you know, handing out flyers or whatever, you know, trying to make an event. Sure. Just people walking by, you know, didn't have, they weren't going there for comics. They were just walking in the neighborhood. They're like, oh, what's going on here? Right. You know, oh, it's an event. Come on in. You know, something like this. You know, here's a free poster. Come on inside. We got all sorts of things. Some people turn the corner and decide to go inside. Yeah. It helps out. You can make new new customers that way. Absolutely. You're up next. Oh, sure. You, you have Southern Comic Geek. And Southern Comic Geek, uh, he, uh, I, I uh, know this gentleman. He's the one that sent me the uh, Daredevil books in the mail. So Southern Comic Geek. Thank you very much for your comment. Show off. Uh, I know, huh? <laughs> he said, uh, a great shop has a good selection of new and back issues, knows their customers enough to be able to, to suggest stuff, has, conversation, uh, has conversations about the comics, and not just take your money. I think that's a great point. I don't think anybody wants to go into a shop and have a relationship where it just feels like you're just taking your money. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the point he's trying to make here. Yeah. I like that. I like the fact that he talks, brings up the back issues. Yeah. That's something that's important to me. Uh, a nice selection of just you know, old Spider-Man and old X-Men or whatnot stuff to go through if you're sure. trying to make your runs. I've kind of, uh, I kind of go back and forth. And I think it's the reason why on this is because we have so many shops very close to each other. Right. My local LCS doesn't do back issues. Not at all. Okay, They're literally new, and after two months, they move on, they dump all the stuff, mm -hmm. and that's how it is. Yep. At a time, I probably wouldn't even go there you know, because they didn't have the back issues. But since there's other shops so close that do have that back issue sure. uh, uh, inventory, I use my LCS now for my new issues. I go to the other shops that have a wide variety of back issues, and I pick those up. Right. And we are, I keep saying this, but we are so lucky to have so many shops we that do. have that. I mean, we have Excalibur. It's been here for over 40 years. Yep. They literally have 40 years worth of comics yep. in their back issue bins. Yep. And then we have we have uh, the, the Fallout, who does nothing but back issues. Yeah. They don't do any new, 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 new comics at all. Yeah, he's like the opposite of the T-Fa that exactly. we got to. So, I mean, it works out pretty well. But if you can get a combination mm -hmm. of the two... Uh, that's really good. Absolutely. I think that's my favorite type of comic shop. Yeah. You know, if I had to rank all the different types that were out there, you know, we, we've just mentioned a few of them. Uh, you know, that would be my favorite. It has a good selection of, of new comics coming in, but they also have a back issue section. Yeah. Uh, you know, we also have a, a comic book shop out here that deals in nothing but indies, yeah. you know, pr predominantly. And so, you know, we have a, a smattering. We're very lucky to have a smattering of all different types out here. Yeah. Uh, the next one is from Richard uh, Dragon. I think it's Richard Dragon. It says, shops that have all the non-Big 2 indie books, speaking of indies, mm -hmm. particularly the trade paperbacks, I don't need them to order it for me. <laughs> I can do it myself. <laughs> I enjoy this comment right here because he, 
a lot of shops they they do say, "Oh, I can order that for you. I can order that for you." And right. it's nice of them to give it an option, but sure. in theory, as far as trade paperbacks, you can pretty much order them yourself and just have them delivered straight to your house, Absolutely. and probably get them for a little bit cheaper. Yeah, um, you can't really order too many comic books because they're you know straight through Diamond and whatnot. You have to right. have an account, but on other stuff you can. But he talks about indie books, and I think having a big indie selection is very important. You just have to have that variety. Right. Um, you might not have a huge indie and back issues, but just the new titles that come out every week. Every week, it seems like there's new number ones from indie publishers, and it's it's hard to find them sometimes. Sure. And so you'll you'll have to go to three or four or five different shops to find one book because none of them ordered it. Right. The key thing on those is just to be updated yourself and go to the comic shop ahead of time and say, "Hey, there's this new book coming out. There's this uh, like alienated number one by Boom Studios." Can you order that for me? And I've talked to some shops like, oh, I didn't hear about that book. Right. You know, they're doing the best they can, but I mean, there's three to four hundred books that come out every week. Sure. They're gonna miss some, and especially if it's not from a major publisher. All right, you're up next. You have Keith. Okay, so Keith Mayo, he says, uh, what he looks for is friendly staff who knows comics. Uh, too many places seem to only hire burnout goths, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> whose knowledge doesn't exist past Magic: The Gathering. Clean. Well lit. Clean stores are nice too. Uh, placement of back issue long boxes so that you don't have to sit on the usually dirty floor to hunt. Uh, I'm fortunate that my LCS has some of these desired features, but not all. <laughs> That's a great comment. Keith, I feel your pain. Yeah, I do too. I, One of my pet peeves are boxes on the ground. Yeah. I'm a big guy. I'm not as limber as I used to be. No. It's not like going to a con. And seeing those boxes sitting on the ground, it's like, yep, I'm not going to be able to look at those. Yeah. It just is what it is. Unless I got a little scooter, and I'm not there yet. <laughs> Don't even go there, man. <laughs> I'm not ready to call it quits. Uh. <laughs> but uh, that's one of my things. And actually, a uh, local comic shop, he would have his boxes on the ground, or at least his selection, and uh, the 50 cent boxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, just because of space. Uh, he had like a chair. That you could just grab a chair, you sit down, and perfect, yeah. perfect, yeah. you know, and you can just kind of slide around, scoot your butt around there, and sure. look at all those books. Uh, but cleanliness goes a long way. Organization, you know, is key. I think being able to find the books you're looking for. There's a lot of shops I've been to where there's no organization. You're looking, and it doesn't make any sense what's at all. Um, there's some shops that will organize their fifty cent boxes, which we really appreciate. And there's some shops that don't. There's right. some shops that just dump them in there, and there's like 20 long boxes of 50 cent books, and you there, there's no rhyme or reason to right. it. Right, right. But organization goes a long way. Cleanliness, you don't want to be sitting on the dirty floor. Let's face it, you know, comic book shops have a stigma about them of maybe not smelling the greatest or being the cleanest places to go. Um, I, I think that... Uh, it's very trendy here in Oregon to make the comic shops look really cool right now. Yeah, you know, it is, it is. <laughs> you, know, you can go in a, there's one that's like all white. Yep. It's just pure white, like like a high class hotel. Yeah. The shelves, the walls, everything, it's pure white. I was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to make they, everything look dirty or right, something right. like that. But very much, what do, what do you think about, Clint? What do you think about the boxes on the ground? So I, I don't like the boxes in the ground. I mean, I'm just like you. I'm a big guy, and it, it makes it difficult. Uh, and you know, Not as big. Huh? Not as big no, as not you as big. Not big. You lost a bunch of weight. I have. I have. But last Comic-Con, because of my weight and because of what it was doing to my back, I had to get a scooter. Oh, you did? I did, yeah. That's what you were making fun of, weren't you? I don't no? remember that. Yeah, huh? Yeah. See? This guy. Anyway, nope. so I but you know, I, I don't like that. I don't like when, when the boxes are on the ground. I just, you know... Uh, it just doesn't make me feel good that I got to bend down to try to look for stuff. Yeah, right? and not to mention the possibility of comic crack. <laughs> there is, there is that possibility because yeah, no, now, nobody now likes to walk in. That. Nobody wants <laughs> to walk in there and you see the people looking down there on the the box on the floor, and it's just a bunch of butt crack from head to toe. This tail. is true. This is and true. And the worst thing is, like at Comic Cons, is you get like a line full of butt crack. This it's like, is true. You go down the whole thing, it's like ten or twenty of them all in a row. They're not the best thing to look at. There you go. Bueller on crack, everyone. Come on, man. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and so, bottom line is, uh, you know, but, but cleanliness does go a long way. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, you're right. There's, you know, comic shops had a stigma for a while. Uh, I think our local comic shops have gotten really, really good mm -hmm. at this. Uh, I like a place that's clean, and I, I really, 
one of the things that's a pet peeve for me is that if you are going to own a comic shop, take care of your shop. Yeah. If you don't like that work, why are you in that business? And you can tell right away when when, when you find boxes that are completely unorganized, you can't find what yeah. you're looking for. Uh, there's things over here and things over there. And he can tell you yeah. that, but never taking the time out to actually organize it so that you can find it. I think that's a hallmark if somebody doesn't really like what they do. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong, running a comic shop is hard work. Right, I mean, you got a bag, and you, you're constantly bagging and boarding. You're constantly going through old comic books. You're constantly having to index things, moving things around. It, it is. It's a lot yeah. of work. And so, and my hats off to those guys who love their craft, love their business, and I love walking into a shop for an owner that actually does love yeah. what they do. You can tell a difference right away. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, I got the next one is from Pigbeard. All right, Pigbeard. <laughs> Pigbeard says, I think many people have answered this way. But my key to a good shop is owners or employees that enjoy the books. Very similar to what you just said. Mm -hmm. When I first decided I was going to get back into floppies last year, I went to one of my local shops, and the owner was an absolute jerk. I felt like I was on his nerve after one question. He didn't know what I was talking about when I asked about Savage Avengers. When I asked him about details on having a pull list with him, he answered, It's just a pull list, no discount. I was so happy walking into that store, but I left there super bummed and pissed off. I have since found an awesome LCS ran by a younger couple. They're passionate and helpful as can be. If you're not excited about the things you sell, your customers feel that. I mean, this is like what you just said. Right. I mean, it really is. I mean, you can tell right away. A bad experience at a comic shop, because there's not a tremendous amount of them available, right. can just ruin it. Absolutely. I mean, you're like, God, I went there. The guy was a jerk. The guy, I mean, I felt like an idiot. You know, the, some people make you feel like an idiot. Right. Okay. And <laughs> in all walks of life, I mean, it's just not comic books. But you're going there and you're curious about something and you want to find out about it. And you ask a question that you think is a valid question. And it is a valid question. And the person that responds to you with some kind of snotty response or something, it's like, Jesus, you know. You're there as a shop owner right. or whatever. You're representing. You're trying to get customers. You want to be the most inviting you can. There's a lot of negative things out there. Comic shops are a local mom and pop business. <laughs> I mean, you got to be like on your best behavior because you're living by every dime. Right. Every dime that comes in that door is important. You can't afford to lose customers. You got to treat every single customer, whether they know what the first appearance is or not. Every one of them has to be treated with respect and feel like they're there as a visit and you're welcoming them. That's right. You have no business without your customers. You know, I mean, so that, that should be your first priority is making sure that they're taken care of, that they feel comfortable and that they want to come back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I remember there was an LCS, uh, you know, back in L.A. where I used to live and uh, the uh, shop owner, uh, when things started changing, uh, you know, with uh, the comic industry and, and most of it started going to Diamond. Uh, he got very upset about that yeah. and he was very disenchanted with the whole comics business community yeah. uh, you know the way things were being ran and it really showed in the way he ran his comic shop and the problem with it was is now he felt like he was stuck with this yeah. business and uh, you know he was it was very crabby um, you know never really inviting and you could see over time just how much business he was starting to lose yeah. until finally that's what ended up happening yeah. he ended up closing his doors yep. you know it's very important that you take care of your customers very important I think we, we started with that like I said it's still a recurring theme of every comment that we pretty much read about customer service absolutely and those negative experience what do they say it's like if you have a negative experience you'll tell like 10 people yeah. about it and then it kind of spreads from there if you have a positive experience Maybe you tell one. Right. So it's amplified quite a bit. Absolutely. So it's very important. For sure. All right, you got the last one here. Last one comes from uh, Patrick Melagrano. Or Me Melorano. There That's we good go. enough. They're good I enough. I had the same hard time when I tried to pronounce it. All right, not a problem. He said, a good comic <laughs> shop rewards its loyal pull customers 20 to 25% pull discounts on your books. Uh, even if the owner knows a book is hot, he doesn't jack up the prices on Wednesday of release for books on the racks. In addition, an LCS should be welcoming to newcomers and kids since they are, are your future customers. That's right. That's a great that's a great point. And you know, the discount, twenty to twenty five percent. You know, 
I, I, I'll, I'll say this. I, I do believe that a good comic shop should give you a discount, yeah. you know, it, you know, for, for having a pull list inside of their store. But I will say that not all comic shops can give you that 20 to 25% yeah. discount. Uh, even some of the bigger comic shops out here, uh, they only give that 25% discount to somebody who has at least 50 titles on their yeah. pull list. And so it just depends on the shop. Yeah. I... I enjoy the discount. I do too. You know that. I, yeah. mean, I get the nice little twenty five percent off on my my discount, um, and that's one of the main reasons I switched shop, just because it's it was just more financially responsible for me to do so. Right. I'm buying the same amount of books, but why not save some more money doing it? Not to mention they were just right down the street from each other. Right. So it made it made sense. It is what it is. Um, but if there's not a discount, um, that does factor into the to my shop I go to but if they can hit all the other stuff like they can hit like new releases they can hit back issues they can hit good customer service and all these other things that we talked about mm -hmm. then I'm okay with not getting a discount yeah because you the a good comic shop <laughs> you don't even care about the discount you don't you don't it's a, it's it's an afterthought um, the one thing you did bring up you know jacking up the prices like on the new Wednesday if there's a hot comic book and we're talking about this right now apparently there's the Batman book that's coming out. And I'd like to hear from you guys that are watching. Apparently, this new Batman has the first appearance of a new character that's coming out this week. And it's already selling for 30 bucks. Wow. Okay? And uh, I looked online. Like People are sold out. T-Fall sold out. I mean, it's on my pull list. I should have it. They don't mark it up. You know, even if, right. they, if they get 30 copies on Wednesday, there's 30 copies sitting on the shelf. And they're cover price with a discount. Right. Because they just don't do it any other way. I'm curious to see what the response is for this book. Have you heard about this one? I have not. Okay, it's first appearance of some character. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I've always felt as though if a comic shop has a pull box customer that orders these books, they should be charged the cover price. Absolutely. Okay? After the pull list customers are taken care of, if, if there's some kind of spike about a book, I understand why they would mark it up. But I've always been like, don't mark it all the way up. Right. You know, if it's selling for fifteen dollars, you know, people are going to come in like, oh, it's fifteen bucks. I'm not going to buy it. Sell for ten bucks. Right. You know, in in the middle type thing. As long as you can take care of your polis customers that have, you're guaranteed to get those books for. Right. I think it's fair game to whatever you put on the shelf. That's just my opinion. Yeah, you know, I mean, again, you know, a shop has to make money. Yeah, you know, and in in this in this particular climate, they're going to look for it any way they can. Yeah, and so if you've taken care of your customers, I have no problem with yeah. that. You know, yeah. but if if you're going to take, you know, things out of customers' boxes and jack up the price because it's something that's being hot, yeah, that that's, is that's, that's bad practice. Yeah, that's really bad practice. So those are the comments that we have, Love and it. but I have some of the things that I look for in a comic shop. I sure. kind of wanted to share that, and you can jump in here if I miss anything. Uh, some of them are very similar. Um, the things I look for in a comic shop, obviously friendly, uh, knowledgeable staff uh, that listen to the customer. Listening is very important. Yes. You'll meet some very knowledgeable staff members. They don't listen to you. Right. They just kind of go right over you. You know, and they're, even though they might even be friendly, but they don't listen to the customer. And But listening, I think, goes a long way. Uh, great selection of product, new and old. Uh, I like pop culture stuff, indies, trades, all that stuff. Just a huge, nice, rounded selection. And honestly, in this day and age, they have to have that. Sure. You can't just be a one-trick pony in this game anymore. It's not going to work out. Nope. Unless you got some kind of deal and you're in the basement of some building and you don't have to be charged for rent and you're this selling is back <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, another thing, clean store, inviting, uh, organized. That's a big thing, just organization. We, talk, we talked about that earlier. Uh, I do like the pull list discount. I do think that there should be a pull list discount. Sure. It doesn't necessarily have to be 20 or 25%, but maybe, maybe something to incentivize yourself right. to sign up for that shop. Absolutely. Um, another thing, and this is my biggest pet peeve, if the books aren't priced. Yeah. I have been to comic shops, and there's no prices on the book. Yeah. And I've been there, I'm like, what is going on? There's literally no, like, hundreds and hundreds of books, no prices, back issues. Take them up to the counter. How much are these? I don't know, let me look them up. I walked right out and never went back. Yeah. I was like, are you kidding me? You're not going to take the time to price your books? Or your product that you're selling, and it's depending on what you look up on eBay. Right. I can go to eBay. 
I don't need to have you look it up for me. I'll just go home and do it myself. There like the other guy said, <laughs> why would I need you to order? I'll just go do it myself. Right. That's one of my pet peeves. That comic shop I'm talking about, they're gone. They're gone. They were gone within six months. Yeah. It was boom, out of there. Um, another thing earlier, events. Events. Really like events. Um, I touched on this a little bit. In-store customers first. Take care of the in-store customers, the people that travel every week that go to your store. Right. And then eBay customers second. Right. I think that's, if if I'm going to give you my time and go down to your store, I should have first priority compared to someone in eBay you don't even know who it is. Right. You know, or a reseller or whatever it is. A huge thing, 50 cent or dollar books. Right. You got to have it. I'm not going. <laughs> if you don't got some sort of 50 cent or dollar selection, I don't care. Right. That's just me. <laughs> um, I also think that an online presence is important as well. Sure. Uh, that's one thing I like about Tfon. I've kind of been talking about them more uh, as of late. <clears throat> they have a great online presence. They have a great website. They have deals and discounts. They got a $1 sale going on. Did you know that? What's that? Tifa? Yeah, they got a one dollar. You had mentioned it to me yesterday. But yeah, they got a one dollar. I just bought like twenty bucks, you nice. know, for like fifteen bucks, and they should be there tomorrow. So nice. I mean, you know, online presence. I think that's important. Those are some of the things I look for. Did I miss something? No, I, I think you know. I mean, you hit pretty much all the points. You know, I, I kind of rate a comic shop on all, almost all of those points. Yeah. And if and if they're hitting on all cylinders, then that right there is probably going to be my favorite comic shop to go to. Yeah. You know, and and there are a lot that have some, but not all. Uh, but you know, not. Do you have a favorite comic shop? I do, but I'm not going to mention it here. <laughs> Come on! Uh, only because I got too many friends that own comic shops, and I'll tell you, you know. But I do have a favorite one. I do. Okay. <laughs> Good call. Let me, let me put you this, this way. My favorite comic shop out in Portland, I don't get to go to as often as I'd like to. How about that? There, there you go. There we go. I don't know what that means. <laughs> All right. So, so that's what we have to say about the uh, comic shops and stuff. We'll have another question this week on the preview video, so please check that out. I actually don't know what it is yet. i got to do a little bit of research. I kind of know what I want to ask, mm -hmm. but I need to word it correctly without pissing people off. All right, that's, so that's that intrigues me. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> but let's go ahead and jump to our final five. Sure. And uh, I will go ahead and go first. Let me take this one down. Um, I got some of these out of the fifty cent bin. Nice. And these are like X Force books. They're not really worth. Oh, some are, mm -hmm. but the covers are really cool. Yeah. So this is X Force number six. Very cool. I didn't show these, did I? No, I don't remember. X Force number twelve. Another awesome looking cover. Mm -hmm. Look at this one. Yeah, you like yeah. that, don't you? X Force number, I don't even know what number it is. Number nine. <laughs> there you go. Very cool. And yeah, this is X Force Sex Plus Violence. This is a uh, Del Auto cover. There you go. Look at that. It's like a $15 book. Is it really? Got a 50 cent man. Wow. And then I got this one, X Force number 17. Cool looking nice. covers. Very nice. I know you're a cover guy. Yeah. Some very cool covers. Mm -hmm. There you go. Not bad. Great final five. All right, you're up. And so, again, these came from uh, my comic call from yesterday. And um, I, I was thinking of my son yesterday, so that's why I picked up the Spawn and uh, also these X-Men books. I picked up a lot of them that had Juggernaut in the cover because nice. he's a big Juggernaut fan. And so I got X-Men number 161. And then I got X-Men number 156. Did you know that Juggernaut is modeled after Hulk Hogan? Is he really? No. Didn't think so, man. What the heck? Come on. What are you trying to do to me? And then uh, I don't see a number on this one. It just says X Men Deluxe. But that's, that's what it is. That's what I figured. Yeah. Right. And then uh, this one doesn't have Juggernaut in the cover, but it's a shiny cover. It's the X Men Special Anniversary issue. It's barely shiny. The barely. The words, the words are, shiny. are shiny, but it's got some shininess yeah, on okay. it. Okay. And passes. then uh, and then X Men number one sixty two. And uh, you got Juggernaut in his gray armor there, which I which I really like. Very cool. I actually have a few of those. Awesome. So uh, they're some pretty cool covers. Yeah. I like Juggernaut as well. I do too. He's not related to Hulk Hogan. No, he's really Professor X though. Yeah, it's loose. <laughs> it's loose. <I> don't know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, I want to say real quick once again, uh, don't forget to enter the giveaway. Yeah. Uh, four different giveaways. We've got the uh, Shannon Mirror autograph book. We've got the uh, print. That's autographed by Todd McFarlane, Robert Kirkman, Mark Silvestri, Eric Larson. Um, I'm forgetting the other two. That's all right. Uh, but 
a bunch of image people. It's all around. Yeah. Uh, we have two other books, uh, Midnight Vista, autographed by the artist Claire Meath. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we have the Max Pro Supplies, the gift box. It's like $50 worth of the supplies. And who knows? We might have something else thrown in there. I don't know. We'll see what we'll happens. We'll see what happens. But go ahead and enter. We're going to announce the winner next week, or the winners next week. The four, winners. Four different winners. Yeah. We ship internationally. That's very important. I want everyone to know that even if you're overseas, you win. We're going to send it out. He'll pay for it. He already said he volunteered. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that should be good. So please do me a favor. The link will pop up. Check out last week's video if you haven't done so already. All you really need to do to enter that giveaway is just leave a comment on the video. Uh, you can literally say, thanks for the video, or thanks, or no yeah. thanks. Yeah. And subscribe to Everything Comics. So, yeah. very cool. I do want to take a minute and recognize the Patreons that we have for the channel really fast. I'll kind of run down the names. Um, we have Comic Crazy. I met him at the Rose City last year. That was cool. Uh, Derek Magnus. Uh, Scarpads Comics. Discovery Bay JB, he's on there now. Uh, Yusuf? I can't Giuseppe. Brian. Giuseppe, God, I was going to get that name. I feel so bad. <laughs> Giuseppe F, thank you. Bubs Comics, another great channel. Two Brothers Comics, another great channel. Reggie Simmons, that's double G Reggie Simmons. Brett F, we all know Brett F. Yep. Best comments in the game. Absolutely. Uh, Comic Ron, thank you. Adam D, thank you. Uh, Jose A, Zach K, John M, Robert, the comic book G Spot, Galvin, Pete C, Mike Rogers, and Sleepy Reader himself, Damien. Damien. He's on the list also, fellow nice. Pacific Northwester. All those people have signed up for the Patreon. Thank you so much. Like I said, it's only the cost of one comic book a month, and it, trust me, it helps out quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. So. Anything else you got going on? You no, want to talk no. about your channel a little yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. So Everything Comics, uh, I've had a couple of technical things happen in the last couple of weeks. Last year, uh, last week, I had the sound go out of my video. And then uh, this uh, this last week, I, I didn't get my book, so I couldn't do a review video. Uh, but I'll definitely <laughs> be back this next week. I may do a, a live stream tonight, but by the time this video drops, that'll, that will have already dropped. So go check it out. Uh, also, we had a live stream last week that uh, was pretty a lot of fun. You can check that out. Uh, that's also on my channel. And then remember, this Thursday, um, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, Bueller and I will be doing the, uh, the weekly rundown. And that's a new show where we talk about uh, a lot of the comic book content that is in movies and TV. And I'm really looking forward to that. Awesome. All right, everybody. That's all we got for you. Appreciate your time. Like I said, episode 71, we're keeping it going. Yeah. Don't forget to tune in next week for episode 72. Where we will announce the winners, like I said, and uh, we'll be able to ship out a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So, anyway, appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You know what to do. We'll see you next time. Bye.